Hello, I'm Greg Jarrett, and you are in the Strategy Room. New Fox News polls show most Americans of all political stripes support construction of the long-delayed Keystone XL oil pipeline, and they want President Obama to sign legislation approving it. Yet, the White House not really willing to move on its position. Joining us now with reaction are political strategist Jessica Tarlov, Thomas Basile. Good to see you both. Jessica, there have been five environmental impact studies over six and a half years. They all say the same thing. The last one came out a year ago this month. I looked it up. It said the pipeline will not significantly increase carbon pollution. The report goes on to explain it does just the opposite. It reduces carbon pollution. And yet President Obama won't decide one way or another. What? He has decided. I mean, every but time he, he trots announced Josh Ernest out there and says that the president will not sign a bill like this, it's not him saying it, but it's his mouthpiece saying it. I mean, he doesn't want to sign this bill. Why? I think it's because of special interests. I think it's because of you know billionaires like Tom Steyer who are going to pump money into Democrat uh, campaigns. And I think it's I think it's a big mistake. Is that I think that's shameless just, to do it for purely partisan I'm not, political I'm not purposes? It's purely partisan purposes. Then there are obviously going to be studies that say that there aren't th five th environmental impact studies by the U.S. government exhaustively I know, I researched. Under Hillary. Yeah, I mean, the last one was like eleven volumes long, seventeen thousand pages. My goodness, Tom. Look, yeah, the president is is bowing to these uh, these special interest groups, uh, the NRDC and and, and their and and the like. Um, and this is an opportunity for Republicans to really drive this issue. I think that they have an opportunity to get their to get their override on this. People want the jobs. They want the money injected to, in, into the economy. Uh, uh, the vast majority, I think right. the number is 65 percent of yep. Americans are now saying, just build the thing. We need right. it. Build it. And, uh, and the president is going his own way. So if the Republicans have any brains, they will be able to convince these Democrats, and then they'll be able to stand up and say to the, to the American public, look, the president is more concerned, and the Democratic Party is more concerned about bowing and praying at the altar of these environmental groups rather than creating jobs for this economy. 42,000 jobs over two years, going to create $2 billion in earnings, $3.4 billion to the GP, GDP, and more than $5 billion in tax revenue, again, that's the report from the government after analyzing this. And yet the president, who promised shovel-ready jobs, doesn't want those 42,000 shovel-ready jobs. Let's remember, this is a president that uh, we have almost 100 million people not working in this country anymore. Right. We have folks who are leaving the workforce in droves, and yet he's talking to uh, India and China and Europe about increasing emissions, uh, emissions regulations that would kill more American jobs. Yeah. But it's not just, I mean, it's not just about the jobs, at least it isn't for me. I mean, this feels like a total gimme. Like, this is a giveaway. This is a way for the president to say, I'm going to hang tough on Obamacare. I'm going to hang tough on immigration. But I'm going to give you Keystone. You know, we're talking all this conciliation. So you're talking talk. reason and logic, and yet the president ignores both. I don't like your tone, but yes, <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly. You what want to I'm read my about. tone? I wrote an op-ed on this. You can check it out at foxnews.com. Click on the opinion section. Um, yes, maybe I was a bit intemperate. Read, read, and judge for yourself. <laughs> I will most certainly check it out. Yeah. yeah. Look, um, the other thing about it is that it's another broken promise. He promised, a solemn promise, he said, look, by the end of 2013, I will issue a decision one way or another. Right. 2013. Right. This is 2015. There well, have but, been but other money. things that have come up. I mean, it's, it's not what? like he's doing nothing. What's come up? Well, we have a war on terror No, I mean, again. what this is, in terms of oh, this I, issue? I, I, was, I was just saying that I think that his focus has shifted, and I'm not saying that that's completely correct. And I think, you know, what happened with Mary Landrieu, like, who essentially lost her seat, right? I was just going to say, this, issue. this is another issue of Obama's ideology being willing to sacrifice seats in Congress, uh, being willing to and, and being willing to uh, to sacrifice uh, jobs and and uh, and benefits to the to the economy. This is about Obama digging his heels in on his own political ideology. All right. Um, do they have in the U.S. Senate, for example, you got to have two thirds uh, of both houses to override a veto? Um, in the Senate, it looks like Republicans may be four votes shy of the 67 votes they need. Any predictions here? 
I, I think eventually this will get through. I, I really? Think, I, yeah. I think they'll do it. I don't do know it. who's going to drop, but I'll think, I, I, think I think they'll do it. The, you know, so the American pressure, too it's, too, it's too high. I mean, we have to be able to, at a certain point, say that our Congress is doing something for the people that they represent. And remember, there are people that people in the Democratic Party, particularly in the Senate, who just got a, a beating, that are looking and saying, look, we need to find some way to distance ourselves or show a degree of independence from this White House because we have other elections coming up in, 20, in 2016. Uh, and uh, and I think that ultimately they should get to their 67 votes. All right. Jessica Charlov, Thomas Basili, if they don't, we're going to bring you back and have you explain yourself. <laughs> Good to see you both. Thanks. Thanks. Good to be with you. For more on Keystone, check out my column, as I mentioned, in the opinion section of foxnews.com. I'm Greg Jarrett. Thanks for watching.